costume. This is Jenny McStitcher, and this little being is my new Black Lab puppy. Her name is Bo, and she's wearing a bow. Okay, so she's nine weeks old. She's absolutely massive. These paws are very, very big. Her paws are almost as big as our two-year-old dog, and she's been very, very good so far. We got her one week ago. Oh, she's got that new puppy smell. She's just heavenly. She likes to chase cats. She likes to chew on furniture. She loves going outside to the backyard. She hasn't been on proper walks yet because we're supposed to hold off on that until she's had all her vaccines. Just dropped her. I don't think I broke her. Anyway, she has been a very, very bright spot in an otherwise difficult few weeks. We lost our old dog. I mentioned our old dog in my previous video. I called her lazy. She wasn't lazy. She was winding down. So, I didn't know if I could say that without crying, but we did lose her. She was 14. She had a great life. Uh, I probably, um, I probably felt pretty brokenhearted about it. So, well, I did. I felt very brokenhearted about it. But then we got the new puppy. And it's not that she's replaced the old dog. She hasn't really done that. But she certainly has made us happy. And if you're a dog person, like I'm a dog person, you know that nothing helps you get over the loss of a dog like a dog. So, new puppy smell, lots of, um, lots, lots of laughs around here. And, uh, and that's all. So, today's June 7th. It's, uh, it's a beautiful sunny day. It is finally, finally feeling like the season. I think I complained that we were unseasonably cold a few weeks ago. That feels hard to believe because now it's unseasonably warm. It's not that I'm never happy. I'm usually happy. I don't mind winter. I don't mind fall. I love all the seasons. Uh, but sometimes, sometimes they feel extreme. Anyway, so here we are. It's been three weeks, I think, since I made my last video. I meant to do one every two weeks, but it didn't happen that way. Uh, I have had um, a week since, we've had a week since Mania ended. I did one new start every day in May. I loved, I loved doing Mania. I think it's a brilliant, it was a brilliant thing to do. I don't know if I'll do it exactly the same way next year, but it was really good. There are things about all those new starts that I really feel like I learned a lot about starting. Sometimes I can be fussy about starting and put it off and collect every single perfect piece of, of, of supplies for it and never actually get to it. So it was really good to just be able to pick something up and start stitching it. One thing I noticed since I started stitching, which is pretty much, I'm going to say more than 20 years, maybe 25 years, uh, I typically stitch on linen, but I would always have to look up which thread on the fabric to start my bottom leg in. You know how you start to the left of a down thread? So up until mania, I would always have to look that up because how many new starts do you do in a year? Probably not enough, at least not the way I had been stitching before all this. Uh, probably not enough to memorize that little trick. So because I started 31 new things, all of them on linen, I'm never probably, probably, maybe, never have, going to have to look that up again. So that's a win. Uh, it's very natural to just go to that, to that thread, to the hole beside the down thread. Brilliant. Anyway, so I do have some mania starts to show you. I know we're probably all mania out, possibly, but you know I'm pretty proud of, of the starts that I made. And so I'm going to show those to you now. I'm also going to show you a little bit of haul from a shop that I, that I went to for the first time. And I'm gonna show you what I've been working on since, um, since May ended. So, that's about that. I'm going to start right in. Now the first thing I'm gonna show you is the Tiny Modernist Year of Animal Fun and Frolics. Uh, I had already shown you quite a bit of this because 
um, because I, I think I only had two or three more to do with the second half of May. My last video was around May, um, May 15th or something like that. Anyway, this is just a really quick share just to show you that I've, I've basically created a border. Maybe not finished the border, but I've created a border for each of the months in this stitch along. So that's that's a great start on that. I'm going to be giving this to my to my baby great niece for Christmas. So I will be making progress on this um, soon, hopefully. But that's kind of a boring share. So first, I'm going to show you the things that I started in in May that don't fall into the songbird series. So the first piece that I'm going to show you. I think I already showed you this as a haul item. I picked this up recently. This was a, a Nashville release, Kathy Barrick, Needlework. So I didn't have a piece of fabric that I really liked for this piece. So I, I went to a new shop for me. Uh, and I might as well just get right into that even though it feels rambly. I went to a new shop it's in Niagara Falls, Ontario. It's less than an hour away from where I live. So it's not a bad location for a local needlework store, but it isn't really a store at this point in time. I'm not sure what the plan is long-term, but at this point, it's more like a studio space. And the studio space is in an old school, not being used as a school anymore. And it seemed like there were some like different, it was being, used creatively and interestingly uh, and in one of the one of the, the classrooms I think it was a former music room is being used as the studio space for magic hour cross stitch supplies so what they're doing there is they're they're dyeing fabric and and they're selling DMC anchor lots of patterns uh, lots of homemade needle minders, grime guards, things like that. Very well stocked space, but as I said, not really a store at this point. The kind of place that you'd probably want to make an appointment, call ahead and say you're coming. They seem more than willing to accommodate drop-ins just with a little bit of notice. Anyway, I absolutely loved going there. I love chatting with the mother and daughter duo that are running the shop. I forget their names just now, but the store itself is called Magic Hour Cross Stitch Supplies. And I bought not the color that I was looking for because I like using linen, as I've said, and most of what they had in stock, if not all of what they had in their hand, sorry, that was my Instant Pot, all, almost all, if not all, of what they had in their hand dyed collection was on Ada. And I'm not really an Ada person. And I wasn't sure if I was, <clears throat> pardon me, I wasn't sure if this pattern even could use Ada because of fractional stitches. I didn't have the chart with me, so I couldn't even check. I think it would have been okay now that I now that I see it. Anyway, so what I did buy was just a plain piece of 32 count linen. I think it was ivory colored. I think. And I brought it home and I dyed it myself. So I dyed this piece. And I'm quite happy with how it looks. It doesn't really look like the picture, you can see, but I think it still looks great. And I made a start on needlework. So um, this is doubled. I'm going to use something on the other side. So there's my start. And I've decided that because, actually that's showing up the color quite nicely. Because of the, uh, the, the different color of this fabric over the one that was called for, I don't think that this gold color that's seen throughout is really going to work. So I decided to just stitch the black for now and then choose a color for inside the stars and for the thread and for the lettering. And it might be, it might be sort of a, like a burnt red color or like a very deep one, like a dark burgundy, maybe variegated. I'm not sure, but I'm really looking forward to this because I think when it was discussed 
around Nashville, like in the videos that people posted afterwards. I think I think even Kathy Barrick herself possibly was saying that she was looking forward to seeing how people changed up the colors. So I think this one is because it only has four or five colors. I think it's actually it's a, it's a it's a straightforward one to convert to your own colors if you're not particularly color coordinated, which I'm not. Anyway, so that's that one. I'll show it to you just once more. Very, very small start, but a mania start. And the colors in this fabric, um, I used a plain writ dye, like a liquid writ dye in, a, in tan and then a brown ochre in the wool dye that I think I showed you in a, in a previous video and, and a yellow in the same wool dye. So it really came out quite multi-colored, but somehow tied together. I was actually, this might be my favorite piece of, this might be my favorite piece of hand dyed fabric. That I've done myself, I should say. Pieces that other people have done, probably more favorite. It's very hard to get consistent results. I think I've said that before. So now I'm going to show you two mania starts that were not the Cottage Garden series, and then I'm going to show you all, all the rest is just Cottage Garden. This one's the Blue Flower Autumn Squirrel, and He's the one I talked about in another video that had a white belly, but the lady at the Crosser store said he looked scrawny because you couldn't see his belly. So I'm hoping that um, I'm hoping that she'll approve of this one. I did choose a slightly darker fabric than the one that they that they called for. And here's my very small start on that. the The border is very simple but quite effective. It's kind of like a link, a chain link border and then that is the bottom of a tiered tray which acorns will sit on so that's a pretty simple start so far pretty pretty small and then I don't know if I told you that I was stitching vintage animals by Jeanette Douglas but I decided to throw this in because I was inspired by Daylene at so grateful she had stitched this and shared it in a, I think maybe a way back floss tube video. I watched, I watched a bunch of hers. I've been watching lots of floss tube, especially at night when the puppy won't sleep. So that's been, that's, that's this one. Um, I'll share this. Now I, I wanted to do the called for fabric, which I believe is picture this plus Ren, but I didn't have it and my needlework store didn't either. So I bought flax. And then I just rinsed it out with a little bit of the writ dye in tan that I used for that other piece. I hardly put any in. It was only like, I don't know, like a quarter teaspoon and some and a cup of hot water. So I was quite happy with how that turned out. It's just it's just a little bit of, of color. It's still mostly mostly just the plain flags. So that's um that seems small for that piece. I got nervous that I that I wouldn't um, I wouldn't have enough room because sometimes when you know you do your calculations with the yarn tree calculator, sort of you know, sometimes it's so easy to put a wrong number in. But then I actually used my um, my this kind of measuring. And I think it'll fit. I think it'll it'll be fine. It is big enough. It's just a little smaller than it looks from the picture. Just like the Cottage Garden Songbird series is a little bigger than it looks from the picture. Sometimes it's just hard to tell. The scale is um, it's just it's just different, right? So vintage animals, Jeanette Douglas, and then we go straight into. Uh, the starts on the Songbird series. So when I was at my trailer three weeks ago and I asked everybody which one was their favorite to do next, um, every, almost everybody, almost everybody who commented so graciously, thank you for commenting, chose Simplicity. So I, I did start this right away. I think I started it the following day. 
not the day of the last video, but the next day. And the reason hi you, the reason I did that was because I, I knew I had all kinds of time that day to stitch. I think I had, I think I had all day if I wanted to. I wound up doing other things, but it was a good stitching day. So I got more done on simplicity than anything else. I think this for, for mania probably, if I'm being honest. And I really like the color, uh, the color fabric that I'm stitching it on. It looks blue, but I think it's called Rue Green. I might be wrong. I have the tag, but I can't remember which. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's 36 count. Linen, stitch two weeks dye strands of floss over two fabric threads. So there's simplicity. And you'll see the daisy started below. That's gonna be nice. I think that's gonna be pretty nice. And um, this is the flower. So there's this big bold one here and then a house. I can get right into all of that. In fact, I might, I might stitch this, I might start this up again tonight because it'll fit in with my June plans which I'll tell you about shortly. The next start was Winter Wisdom. And Winter Wisdom is the only one in this series that I decided to use DMC floss for, mostly just as an experiment to see how I feel about it. And I'll be honest, I think it's gonna be a little bit plainer than the other ones. There's nothing wrong with DMC, but because I'm doing the other ones, it's gonna be noticeably different. But there's my start. These are little sort of Argyle style, style trees that you'll see in the middle of the pattern. I started each of these sort of in the center. Just for simplicity's sake. So there's that one. Have faith. I really like this piece. In the center of this one is that house. That's pretty cute. So that's what I stitched. And I didn't get its windows filled in, but I did give it a roof. So I felt pretty good about the progress on that one. You can really see those, um, those threads behind the fabric, which I guess is a good, um, a good selling point for not traveling with your thread at the back. I don't do that anyway, but I have done it. And, uh, and sometimes they're visible on this nice light fabric very visible so that was um have faith and here's love so love also the word is in the middle sometimes the bird's in the middle sometimes the word is in the middle sometimes the house is in the middle they're all quite different but they're definitely a series so there we have the word love nothing around it just love it's definitely my favorite color for the backgrounds of these marianne bright so this is kind of funny uh i've only made four floss two videos now if i if i post this one and already i'm posting two or sharing i should say two flat-headed bird pictures this one was an accident i thought i was finished but look at how flat his head is. I, I guess I thought it was neck, just angle like that. But as it turns out, I did miss a row at the top. But he's quite cute and I, I feel good about the progress that day. I think that might have been another weekend day. It had to have been. But as I said, I didn't keep good track of what I did when I did it. I thought about it, but that's as far as I got with that. Happiness. Bluebirds of happiness. So that bird who is standing on the nest is the part that I that I got a good start on, but didn't finish. Maybe this is rue green. Anyway, there's that birdie. I love him. I'm going to love him more when he has a beak, some feet, and a fill in on his wing. I just love the texture of his red breast and the white, shiny white of his underbelly. I don't even know if that's what that is, underbelly. 
Anyway, he's cute. I think I missed ironing that one. I ironed most of them. And the least impressive start in my Stitch Mania was probably one of the sad days around the end of my of my old dog, Maya. Probably strange I got any stitch at all. This one is Courage. It's those two blades of, um, sorry, I'm giving you the finger. These two, oh my goodness, uncoordinated. These two blades of um, foliage. I was gonna say grass, but it's not grass. And I don't know how it goes. It either goes that way or that, I think it's this way. I think it's like that. And I've got a gnarled up bit of floss behind there. Super unimpressive, but hey. It was a start. That's all that was. Uh, that's all that was expected, right? Just a start. Okay. So I talked about Magic Hour Cross Stitch Shop. I mentioned that I went there and bought that fabric, but I didn't tell you about the experience in any great detail, which I'm going to do now, because they gave me a free gift. So I bought that fabric that I showed you. I also bought a piece of black linen because I've never stitched on black and I've uh, then I remembered that black is supposed to be quite difficult to stitch on and this is 30, 32 count linen so I may I may not have the eyesight for that but I'm gonna try and I should try it soon because I still do have some I do have to have some decent you know eyesight so I might as well stitch that I'm not gonna save that for my retirement let's just say that okay so they also gave me a free pattern magic hourglass and that I believe is the um, I think that the magic hour cross stitch supplies title is from the magic hour when all your chores are done your day is, you know, you feel good about your day and you can finally sit down with a cup of tea or whatever and start stitching. So I think magic hour is that magic time when you can start stitching. So they gave me a free chart. They gave me those two beautiful pieces of linen that they had in store. And they also put my purchase in this gorgeous handmade uh, carry bag, sort of like a I don't know what you call these satchels uh, I don't know drawstring bag fits it fits a piece of it fits a pattern quite nicely perfectly in fact and everything you'd need to do that project so um, I love it I found that just so touching that they they, they they even put a little made for you by magic hour CrossStitchSupplies.com. That's their that's their website name. I thought that was sweet, but that wasn't all. They also had a free gift, and I did happen to notice that they had a bunch of these. So if you ordered from their shop, I bet I can't swear, but I bet they would send one of these with your purchase. Very very generous. So here's what was inside. A thank you note for shopping there. That's about, that was enough right there, just to take the time to do that. An amazing sweet needle minder with one of those rare earth magnets. So that's lovely. And I don't really use needle minders because I'm, I find that when I'm stitching, if I have it at the top of my fabric like it's supposed to be, when I pull the thread up, it often somehow gets up on that needle minder and then it interrupts my flow. So, but this is so cute and so cheerful, and I loved the shop so much that I'm gonna try again. Also, gave me three random but popular DMC colors a black and a white, and a 820, and a sweet little table, not table, tablecloth. Um, tape measure that's the ta word i was looking for little tape measure which i will which will come in handy and i've already used it and then put it back and a pack of needles so 
obviously they care about their customers and they are putting putting their their best foot forward right now um, they even took the needles oh I didn't mention it also included a pack of needles DMC needles or maybe I did mention that anyway they put the they took the 26 pack of needles out and they put in a 28 pack of needles because um, because I was buying linen so that was pretty sweet now most of what they had in the shop I think I mentioned before was Ada dyed Ada but I think you'd really like the way that they the, the, the way that they're dyeing their their fabric and they did tell me that they're going to get into dyeing linen they either had already and it was out of stock or they were just about to launch that I don't know if you can hear that but one of my dogs is having a nightmare or a dream I'm not sure which they're both just flaked out on the floor here beside me okay so since May ended and June has begun I kind of didn't know where I was gonna go with my stitching because up until until now I've been sort of like not a monogamous stitcher but definitely more monogamous than all of this business so I wasn't sure where to go but the first thing that I did was pulled out my linens and threads stitch along because June had come out so I got a tiny start in June and I think I'm gonna to try to resume this but maybe not there's my start on that and I didn't this one down here bottom corner is the June piece May is up here and I really didn't get too far May was busy so one thing I, I, I failed to mention because I was a little bit uncertain if I was going to was that I started the second version of that of that stitch along after I stitched the peacock and the borders which were the first two months I felt like it was going to be really boring as a monarch monochromatic piece I was wrong I think it's actually quite nice monochromatic I'm very happy with it and also I'm very happy with other people's monochromatic versions of it in the Facebook group in fact my eye is always drawn in all of the years of these stitch alongs from them my eye is always drawn the most to the monochromatic versions that being said I did feel like he was kind of pasty white and I was longing for color maybe it was a winter thing it was February I'm not sure I decided to start him again in color and so I did I picked up this really beautiful fabric I don't know if you can see that this is there's a bit of shimmer to it this is one of those metallic op opalescent this is white opalescent ah, can't see it anyway it is trust me it's very shiny and I decided to go all out with color from the monochromatic to fuchsia in one fell swoop so I don't think I think this is a little bit bigger than my little 12 by 12 board there so I'll just hold it up there's my colorful peacock obviously I need to do the feathers on the on the other side I think that's left yeah and finish filling in the garden path so I don't know how I feel about the feathers that's one of the reasons why I stopped I I thought it was a good idea but I don't love the feather technique that I used so I kind of like it but I'm not sure I do like the fuchsia which is surprising it's not my color I don't have any fuchsia in my house but I was thinking this if I finish it which I probably should especially since the individual monthly pieces now aren't super ch I shouldn't say challenging it's not that they're not challenging because there are even stitches that aren't um, cross stitches it's that they're not time consuming so I should finish this I've done the bulk of it really and I was going to give it to a very close friend who just bought a house uh, uh, as a housewarming present but if he sees this floss tube video which he made because he's one of the very few people I've told about my floss tube channel um, he might not like fuchsia he might say he wants the monochromatic one I'm not sure anyway so those are my those are two things that I've been working on in June no one thing the monochromatic the other one I haven't touched since before May 
The other thing I've been working on since since June started is life is mostly froth and bubble. So I love this one. I love it so much. I don't have the picture handy. I don't know where it is. But what I've done here is the first band of flower motifs and the first line of the poem. Uh, life is mostly froth and bubble. So what I think I'm going to do next on this is just continue to fill in the outline of the motifs in black. And then when I come to a poem line, I'll, I'll write that in with, um, in its full because it's not outlined. And then when it's all done all the way to the bottom, because this is a fairly big piece. There we go. That's how big it'll be more or less. Then what I think I'll do is fill in those, fill in the flowers later because I love doing that. I love creating little coloring sheets for myself, which is basically what these are. If I opened a coloring book and saw that in there, I'd be excited about it. So I would grab my pencil crayons and I would go to town. So I think that's what I'm gonna do because I, I don't know if I mentioned I have a weekly stitching club and when we get together, I find, we get together for 1.5 hours um, every Tuesday. And what I find is I can never count when I'm with them because I, because I seem to chat a lot. So I, whenever I count, I make a mistake. So I spend one hour stitching, half an hour frogging, and I wind up back where I started. So I thought if I do this kind of thing there every week, then I will, I will fill in those motifs at my club, right? And then, uh, yeah, because I, it is handy to leave, um, to leave a piece there. We have the same space every week, so I can leave a space, I can leave a project there. So I think that that's what I'm going to do with this one. I think it makes sense. I can see this quite easily. I can't always see every, um, fabric easily, but this one has a, this is, uh, picture this plus. And I just find that the, the weave of this is open and the, even though it's not Ada, it's, um, I think it's 32 count. Somehow it's, the holes are very visible to me and, and the color is, is visible. So I can do this in lower light at home. I have a magnifying light and I, I actually stitch a lot under that thing, but at work I don't, or at the club, I don't have that. So, um, yeah, I think, I think that'll work out well for me. So I think that's about it for my, uh, for my current whips, my haul, end of mania, all that stuff, uh, and the dog. That was an update. I'm also doing, I'm, I've just decided, I just decided today, so I'm a bit late. I've decided to do the 24 hour um, monthly challenge, not the 24 hour stitch straight challenge, like the marathon. I can't do that this weekend because it's it was it's supposed to be July 7th, 8th, possibly 9th. The weekend is too busy for me. My um, We have a lot going on and I have to work tomorrow, so that won't work. Uh, but what I did decide to do is the 24 hour, uh, 24 hours of cross stitch month of June challenge. It's, it's, it's from Jen Lee who has a floss tube channel. I'm sure, I'm sure everybody who could possibly be watching mine already knows about this, but, um, but anyway, her challenge is to take the first letter from 24 and then stitch a piece that connects somehow and it can be creatively, uh, to that letter. So a lot of these are going to be from mania, but a couple of them are different. So I decided to do the minimal time requirement for these only because new puppy and a week late starting. So I've decided to do T is for a stitch in time. The connection is time. I abandoned heaven and earth designs, a stitch in time on the second shelf because we got the two year old puppy and she was eating the legs off of my stitching stand because she was crazy puppy. So I put it away, I put it far away and I haven't stitched on it since. So I've decided to resume stitching on that, but in hand instead of on the stand because we have a new puppy and she'll eat the legs off my needlework system for stand. She actually put teeth marks in the metal. She really went to town on that thing. So that's my plan for June. 
maybe I'll stitch more than 24 minutes on that one. It needs about 24 years. Anyway, W is for decorating the wreath. It looks like a wreath, so I figure that's a connection. The title is decorating the wreath, but it's a wreath. W. E is for Elizabeth. So on the Pride and Prejudice Primitive Hair Sampler, there's Elizabeth Bennett in silhouette. So I've decided I'm gonna try and count very carefully over to where she should be and stitch her in silhouette. That's the E. N is for November. That's the November Tiny Modernist Animal piece. T is for There is Beauty in Simplicity, which is what the Simplicity from Country Cottage is it Country Cottage? Cottage Garden? Cottage Garden. What it's really called. Simplicity is there is beauty in simplicity. So that's the T. Y is for Yule Queen. Also primitive hair. F is for Froth and Bubble. So that's the one I just showed you. O is for October, which is another tiny modernist. U is for Uncharted. So Uncharted, that is, I think I mentioned in a previous video that I was thinking about taking some family quote quotations and stitching them up. So um, one of them could be two pounds of love because the Canadian national anthem has a part in it that says um, true patriot love. And my daughter, until she was about five, she thought it was two pounds of love. So we're gonna use that at her wedding for sure. Two pounds of love. So I think I'll do two pounds of love as an uncharted uh, small piece for this. Uh, uncharted. I might chart it, then it won't be uncharted anymore, but I'll be the one charting it. So right now it's uncharted, so it fits into the U. And then for R, I'm calling this one royalty. R is for royalty, and it's my Mary Queen of Scots long lost sampler which I stitched early in May. I started it early in May and I shared it with you maybe two videos ago. So that all spells 24. I did this like an hour ago because I, I made, I did start a video and I stopped it because I got kind of, I got kind of ahead of myself. I hadn't decided if I was doing this or not and then I, I, my video got kind of messed up. So I, I decided to stop, start again, figure this out and then and now here we are. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do the 24 challenge. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a post about it maybe tonight because I did join the group but I didn't commit to anything. So this is me committing to the 24 hour challenge, which I think is a great idea. And I really like Jen Lee. I like her videos and I like the I like how um I I like how this kind of takes us from mania into something new that's also structured, but not quite as structured as mania was because mania was crazy but fun and I think I'll do mania again but it'll be nice to also do some of these other challenges that come up and I think that they're starting like I didn't even I, I think I mentioned before I didn't even know there were any of these things so I've just been stitching watching TV stitching but now it's so much more fun because there's there's a there's a community and there are challenges and there are there's information sharing, there's there's eye candy sharing of people's projects, and it's just it's just a thrill to me. So so that's pretty much where I'm at. The only other thing I wanted to share was that um, I watched a few videos of Pam and Steph. So they they sat beneath a bunch of finished pieces, and one of them was Lavender and Lace Mother's Tree. And I was quite, um, I was quite moved by that because, you know, mother's histories can sometimes be lost with genealogy kind of following the male names. So I decided to do that in my family and I've tracked back now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight generations. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do that. I haven't picked up the pattern yet. I haven't, um, I haven't planned it very far except that I now have all these mothers names their birth names and their birth years and i'm going to stitch them i'm going to stitch them just just the way that they did i'm going to have my daughter at the bottom and i'm going to make one possibly for my great niece who i have mentioned several times 
I might even stitch her one because she puts an extra generation in it. So that's very exciting. And that's about it for my stitching craziness. Uh, that's, that's probably it for everything, I think. The house is starting to smell divine because I'm cooking and I'm also getting quite hungry. So I think I'll just call this done. It's a little longer than I thought it would be. I was hoping for 30 minutes. It's more like 40. So I'll just say, see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope you're having a great day. I hope the weather is as nice where you are as it is where I am because it's perfect. See you next time. Thank you.